Greetings. Welcome to F major added second chord. Uh, this week's synthesizer patch provided by my good man Harlan. Great guy, good friend. And it is April now. April Fools was yesterday. Not a lot of fooling happened to me, thank goodness. I have these thoughts every now and often. You know, you, you people you hear on the radio or on uh, the internet where everybody people have these intrusive thoughts where they think about, like, punching babies. You know, and they would never punch babies. Who punches babies? Nobody punches babies. I have intrusive thoughts. I would never act on them. But I think about skydiving. It's the weirdest thing, because you can usually, you know, think about intrusive thoughts. You think about, oh, uh, you know, punching babies, pushing cats out of windows. But I think about skydiving. And the reason this isn't like a recurring, like an aspiration, like a recurring daydream, because I don't want to go skydiving. I've never been interested in skydiving. I've never, you know, looked at skydiving and thought, wow, that's something I want in on. Like, immediately. No, I don't think about that. I look at skydiving, it's like, yeah. That's definitely what it looks like when people go skydiving. But, you know, I'm just sitting in my my uh, my science class, and I'm listening to the guy talk about science. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, skydiving. I think about parachutes. I think about airplanes. I think about jumpsuits. I think about goggles. I think about falling. But I don't think about, like, me falling. I just think about falling like the abstract. That's the weirdest thing. I think about skydiving as this abstract thing that happens to people when in fact you have to pay a large quantity of money to go skydiving. And yet here I am thinking about skydiving and not wanting to spend money on it. It's unusual, I suppose. I never wanted to go skydiving. I don't know what I would do with myself if I did go skydiving. I mean, I know what I would do. I would pull the chute. Maybe I would spin around in the air a little. I would probably freak out a bit. That's something I'm very good at, freaking out a little. But there I would be, falling through the air at a substantial, substantial velocity with a considerable acceleration, 9.8 meters per second per second. I don't want to go skydiving. But why do I think about it? When I was younger, I used to have these thoughts about flying, you know? I had to write for a project, you know, a project in elementary school, this book of poetry, and I wrote a bunch of poems about flying. A bunch of them. Because I thought it would be like the coolest thing if I could just, you know, take off and then just rocket through the air. So it's not as if these are, as if this is something that has no precedent. It has something like a precedent. It's just that this, maybe this childhood desire has sublimated itself into something different. I don't know why I keep thinking about it, though. That's the thing. Because, you know, it wasn't like I would just constantly think about, you know, going off and flying through the air when I was in the fifth, in the fourth grade. But I just randomly find myself thinking about skydiving. Remember that one guy who, like, went up into, like, the trophosphere or whatever, that giant, I think it was a balloon. Was it a balloon? It was either a balloon or an airplane. And he parachuted from a, a spectacular height. How many years ago was that? What was his name? Felix something? He was Felix something. And I remember he was, you know, interviewed for Time Magazine. I used to read Time Magazine. My, my mother had a subscription to Time Magazine, and I would read the interview in the back, and he was quoted as saying, you know, if you had a 50-50 chance of not making it, would you have done it? It was like, no, that's ridiculous. I don't do 50-50. You know, this is a man who had just flown up to a great height and jumped down from nearly space, wearing, you know, a space suit and everything with his parachute on. That's a man with a pretty advanced idea of what he will and will not do. <laughs> this is a guy who knows more or less exactly what he wants in any given moment. That's a man who, you know, you let him order whatever he wants on the menu. 
He wants the chicken nuggets from the kids. Maybe you give him those chicken nuggets. He wants them. He's coming to this exact place seeking those exact nuggets. That exact children's menu. It's been a long time since I had chicken nuggets. I should seek them out. There's a McDonald's a couple blocks away from mine. But do I really want to go to McDonald's to have chicken nuggets? No. No. But now, all of a sudden I'm nervous and I'm going to have intrusive thoughts about going to McDonald's and getting chicken. Sorry about that. I, I have a block of wood here and I'm manipulating you with my feet and I jostled it into my desk. I was talking about either chicken nuggets or parachute. Can you imagine a chicken with a parachute? Do animals go skydiving? I mean, I don't think they go skydiving. Go skydiving implies that there is agency involved. Do people take their animals into the air and drop them with the... No, that doesn't make sense. Because they don't have thumbs. They don't have hands. They can't pull the lever, the pulley, the drawstring thing, and then deploy the parachute. They don't have that kind of reasoning. Maybe a monkey would, but why would you take a monkey up into... I mean, if he fell, can you imagine? Can you imagine, you know, being, you know, a scientist and taking a monkey up into, you know, low Earth orbit, not even low Earth orbit, just skydiving height, and then pushing it out with a parachute and seeing if it makes it all the way down? Can you imagine that? That would be ridiculous. No one would take you seriously if you were that scientist. You could talk about, oh, I want to see, you know, his problem-solving skills. I want to see his evolutionary connection to the daredevils of today. I want to see this. I want to see that. You'll forever be remembered as a scientist who pushed a monkey out of an airplane to see if he could skydive or not. And he wouldn't. The, the monkey, I... Give me any monkey in America and I will show you a monkey who cannot skydive. This is not, because that's such a, this part of the reason why it confuses me, why I have this thought, because it's such an artificial thing. You know, you think, oh, I want to eat chicken McNuggets. Okay, that's a thing, you know, that's hungry. You're hungry and you want food. You want a particular kind of food. You have this biological craving. Who has a biological craving to go up into the air and jump out of an airplane? I don't. I don't have a mental craving, or a biological craving, or a chemical craving, or a nuclear craving. I don't have any of those things. I'm perfectly happy with my butt in the chair. So you put a monkey in a, you know, put a monkey in a jumpsuit, and you give him the parachute, he's not going to think, oh, I'm going to pull the chute. That's not a natural thing. You don't have to train the monkey. But then you'll be remembered as the guy who taught a monkey how to, you know, skydive. You don't want to be that either. Because that's, there's no dignity in that. How does science benefit if monkeys skydive? Let's ruminate on this question a bit. How does society benefit from skydiving monkeys? What good is there in it? Can you send monkeys somewhere to save lives or something, but you can only do it by skydiving? What can a monkey with a parachute do that a human with a parachute can't? No, 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 no. It's no good for rescue situations. And it's just, I mean, the monkey won't enjoy it. It's not good for recreation. It's not really useful for any other scenario that I can conceive immediately. You'd be doing it to see if it could be done. You can't get funding for that. You can't get, because no one wants to see if a monkey can skydive. It's a luxury. When is a monkey ever going to need to skydive? When are we as a society ever going to need skydiving monkeys? That's what it circles back to. I wonder if parachutes are reusable. I wonder if you can pack it back into the bag when you're done parachuting. I could look it up on the internet. But then my internet service provider will think I'm into parachuting and they'll assail me with advertisements for parachutes, which I'm not interested in buying. If anything, they'll just fuel my intrusive parachute thoughts. Which, of course, is counter to the point. Let us hope, then, that it never comes to that. 
Anyway, good talk. I'll see you next week.